Hey, we're kicking off this brand new series this morning called a Hey Siri. Somebody say, Hey Siri. Hey Siri. Nobody's phone went off. Let's go. Two for two in services this morning. But here's what I'm going to talk to you specifically about today, everybody. I'm going to talk to you about the power of your words. Because whether you know it or not, whether you believe it or not, your words are powerful. So let me say, my words are powerful. Your words are powerful, and with good reason, because the Bible actually tells us in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, that the tongue can bring death or life, and those who love to talk will reap the consequences. The tongue can bring death or life, and those who love to talk will reap the consequences. The Bible also tells us and shows us, lays out for us in Genesis chapter 1, you can go and read the whole chapter. I would encourage you. It's the, it's the account of creation. The Bible says that God said, and then God said, and then God said, and as God said, it was created. And God said, and another thing was created. And God said, and another thing was created. And then God said, and we were created. And the Bible says that we were created in the image of God, which means that God placed within us creative power, specifically in our voices. Why do you think that it is that nobody ever wants to pray out loud because we sound stupid or we feel stupid or somebody's going to judge us or whatever the case may be? Because the enemy knows that there's power in your voice. And he knows that if he can get you to silence your voice, that he can produce death in you. Oh, Pastor Matt, isn't that a little extreme? If I'm silent, then he produces death in me. Well, let, let, me, let me ask you this, friends. If something isn't alive, what is it? The reality is, friends, there is power in the words that we speak, and they will, in fact, ultimately produce something in us. They'll either produce death or they will produce Life And the choice is yours. My hope is that many of you will get on board with what the scriptures are encouraging us and choose to produce life. But here's what's going to happen. For those of us who are stepping forward and saying, yes, life for me. There's going to have to be something that changes on the inside of you. It's going to require a change of heart. It's going to require a changing, an adjustment in the way that you think, the way that you talk, the way that you feel about things, it's going to require change. The Bible says this in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. It says that we uh, are not supposed to conform to the world, but we're supposed to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. See, you already think like the world thinks. You already think like culture thinks. You already think small. You already think in fear. You're already controlled by all of those things. But as believers, somebody who has, has been given life in our spirit, we're supposed to step up and be transformed by the way that we think. We've got to change the way that we think. We've got to change the way that we think. Because culture, we're already hardwired to think or behave or act that way. And culture, even church culture in a lot of regards, has taught us things that are incomplete and ultimately untrue. They've taught us things that are incomplete and untrue. Can I tell you one of the things that I hate most that I learned as a kid? I used to think that it was true. And I used to let it control the way that I thought. But I think it has created a really, really, really unhealthy set of core values in many of us. And it's this. Sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never hurt you. Eh, wrong. That's such a lie. It is absolutely untrue. Sticks and stones, they will hurt. But so will words. So will words. See, but the problem is we can't see physically the effects of words or that words have on us, but we can see physically the effects that sticks and stones have on us. 
What we're trying to say essentially is what you say has no power over me. And that's true to an extent. It's true until you allow those words to have power over you. Well, how do I know if I've allowed those words to have power over me? We'll get to that in just a minute. But we're people in our culture that we know how to handle physical wounds, don't we? If I break a bone, I go to a doctor, right? I see the appropriate person and I get the proper attention and, and he snaps that bone back into place making the right adjustment and then he gives me an application how of aid that this is what you should do for the next six to eight weeks. You should use some crutches, you should take some ibuprofen, you should keep weight off of it and all of these different things because it also requires an appropriate amount of time, Right? But we know how to handle that because we can see it. But we can't see the effects of words. And so we've begun to believe that emotional things can't be healed. We've begun to believe that mental things can't be healed, that anxiety and depression can't be healed. Or we believe that anxiety and depression isn't even actually a thing. If you remember here a few years ago when mental illness and mental health started being a big topic of conversation. And I had friends that were like, oh, give me a, come on. What were they saying? They were saying, okay, there might be something there, but because I don't understand it, because there's a misunderstanding, I'm going to just take the bait and mistreat everybody who's feeling this way. I'm here to tell you that I believe that emotional and mental wounds can heal too, but they are going to require the proper attention. They're going to require the proper adjustments. They're going to require an application of aid, and they're going to require an appropriate amount of time for healing. But again, I believe that the problem is that most of us have never learned how to give these wounds the attention that they deserve. Because these wounds were sustained in an unseen realm, which is why they are grossly misunderstood and mistreated. Even in the church world, we overlook spiritual things. We talk about how spiritual things ceased to take place when the canon of Scripture was closed. But if you'll just simply read the book of Acts, there is no stop to the spiritual things that God wants to do amongst our culture and and, in his people. There's no stop to it. It says from generation to generation. It says people for everywhere, all the time, to the, end of the, to the end of the age. I don't know about you, but I'm looking around and I'm seeing children still being born. This age is not ending. It hasn't ended yet. So God's still busy doing the work that he intended to do when he set the power of the person of the Holy Spirit. We don't even address this well in the church. And we don't give value to an unseen world. We don't give value to unseen things. And because of that, some of those deep wounds, those inner wounds that cause us to think or say things or have an inner dialogue about our life that just aren't true have held us captive and held us hostage. And I believe that this has to change. Because you and I grew up hearing things like, oh, just suck it up. Or maybe it wasn't that harsh. Maybe it was, suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> Anybody ever heard that? Mm-hmm. Some of us might have heard, hey, just get over it. It doesn't really matter anyway. Just forgive and forget. Anybody? It's the worst thing you can do. You should forgive, but you absolutely shouldn't forget because if you forget, you don't actually heal. And all that happens, all that happens is you're burying that thing anyway. And anything that's buried alive will resurface at some point. The list goes on with these things, y'all. These are words that indicate trauma. And they indicate a need for attention a need for adjustment, a need for proper aid, and a need for appropriate time to heal. 
you ever heard the saying, hurting or hurt people hurt people? Of course you have. I, I think it's true. Here's the problem. Most all of us are hurting. We're not hurting with broken bones. We're not hurting with, you know, like a bunch of physical ailments necessarily. But we are hurting with mental and emotional ailments that we've never learned to actually navigate. We've never given the proper attention to. And so we've never healed. And so what we're doing is we're cycling around in this hurt. And we're hurting ourselves, but then we're hurting those that are closest to us as well. And we're looking at ourselves in the mirror. We're like, just suck it up. Just get over it. Come on. Buckle up your bootstraps, buddy. You know, anybody? You should be beyond this. Come on, you're a grown man now. You should be beyond this. You're a grown woman. You're a mother. You should be beyond this. But the problem is any wound that is buried alive will ultimately always resurface. And so we're wondering, we're looking, we're wondering why am I doing this again? And it's because you were hurt in your past. You were disappointed in your past. Or you gave access to somebody in your past that should not have had access to your heart. And so we do a couple of things. We either continue to ignore it or we continue to excuse it. I can't tell you the amount of times I've heard people say, well, so-and-so in my past, my dad or my mom or my ex-spouse or in my past. Can I tell you something? I'm telling you there's a hurt, there's a trauma there. And it's real. And I'm not giving you an excuse to be a jerk to everybody and be hurtful and hateful toward everybody else. Here's what I'm challenging you. Can I challenge you? Can I challenge you? It's time for us to move forward. It's time for us to get the proper aid. It's time for us to, to put the proper medicine on this thing. It's time for us to, uh, to apply some of these things that will heal us. It's time to give the appropriate time so that we can be healed of these things so that we're not hurt anymore. Here's my challenge to you. Stop being a jerk. Stop being a victim. Let's start moving forward. Let's start moving forward, healed, because God wants to heal you. I know that you were abused. I know that you were taken advantage of. I know that you were let down. I, I know all of those things. But it's time for you to stop living back there and start living right here where you are. Can I tell you something, everybody? Sticks and stones will break your bones. In words, they will certainly hurt you. And I believe that over the next few weeks that God wants to show us some of these broken places in us. The places that have caused us to believe in and partner with the lies that have been spoken over our lives. I mean, why do you still talk to your spouse that way anyway? It's because there's internal trauma that you have not dealt with. Why do you interact with your kids that way? Because there's internal trauma that you have not yet dealt with. And a lot of times I want to blame the person, but it's not the person that I'm doing life with right now that's hurt me so bad. It's the person or the people in the past that have hurt me so bad. And I'm just carrying that woundedness into this new season. And guess what? As I blame this person in this season, I'm going to have to blame the next person in the next season. And the next person in the next season. Until all of a sudden I realize that the common denominator is not everybody else, it's me. Because I never healed appropriately. I believe that God wants to heal us. You believe that? Yeah. You believe that? Yeah. Good, 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 good. I mean, do you really want to continue to think about your coworkers that way? I mean, they're supposed to be your friends, right? Do you really want to cut them down in your mind to build yourself up anymore? Like, let's move on, right? Let's move beyond that. Somebody else being successful doesn't cost me anything. Actually, the people being closest to me, uh, the people closest to me being successful, it actually sets me up for more success and a bigger win. All these things simply indicate that there are lies somewhere that we have believed and that we've bought into. And I believe that God wants to give us the ability to see these lies for what they are and find the truth in his word. To replace them by the power of the Holy Spirit. Somebody say this with me. Say, the thoughts that I think 
And the words that I speak will ultimately define me. Let's jump into the Bible. Matthew chapter 12, verse 33. A tree, everybody, is identified by its fruit. If a tree is good, its fruit will be good. If a tree is bad, its fruit will be bad. You brood of snakes. <laughs> I love Jesus, man. He's like, ah, suckers. How could evil men like you speak what is good and right? For whatever is in your heart determines what you will say. What Jesus is saying is, I know that you're putting on this religious front and act, and I know you put on your Sunday's best, but how could something good come from you because you're playing a cover-up game rather than really navigating what's in your heart? A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. Here's the first thing that we need to know about the words that we're speaking. The words we speak will show where we are. The words that you speak show where you are. Now, I know everybody in this room has some kind of aim to be a, um, a faith person or spiritual-minded person and to speak good things. But what I would encourage you to do is take inventory of the things that you're actually speaking. Not like the things that you want to speak, but the things that you're actually saying. Oh, man, this week has just been so hard. Okay, how was last week? Really hard. How about the week before? Really hard. It's just bad, man. Just bad. But praise God, I believe he's going to do something. Well, how's next week? It's going to be hard. I'm sure of it. You're wearing me out. I can't imagine how worn out you feel. Do you see what I'm saying? Out of the overflow of the heart, your mouth will speak. So I know you want to be a faith person, but what are you actually saying? What are you actually saying? Like around our house often, we're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you actually saying? Because what you're saying is not aligning with what you've said you're believing for. Do you hear what I'm saying? Mm, good, I hope so. I mean, have you ever been around those people that like, they're doing like really good and then all of a sudden they're not. Maybe you're one of those people. I used to be one of those people like, everything's going so good, man. God is great. I can't believe it. Yo, I went to Dollar General and I bought 10 water pistols and I'm about to storm hell. Let's go. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I lost my notebook. My tire was flat. <sighs> Went to get a beard trim, man. They jacked it up over here. It's just terrible. Those people that go round and 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 round. And round. Like your marriage is great and then all of a sudden it's not. And your marriage is great and then all of a sudden it's not. It's great and then it's not. It's great and then it's not. I take a few steps forward and then a few more steps back. Isn't that not frustrating? Can I tell you what the deal is? It's an indicator for you that there's trauma in your heart that hasn't been healed. And what we have to begin to do is we have to begin to take inventory of our hearts. And the way that we do that is we are mindful of our thoughts. And we're mindful of our words. Like, what things are you thinking consistently? What are you speaking consistently? You've got to take inventory of them, those things. Because here's why. This word heart, I thought this was so interesting. You guys are going to love this. This is about to change your world, okay? Just prepare for your worldview to just get so big right now, okay? You guys know what the heart is? Oh, 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 boy. That was, that's bad. That's bad. <laughs> First service I did really good, I was feeling myself. I, I went a little too fast on that. Okay. Okay, look away. Everybody look away. Yeah, that's good. We're going with it. It's a heart, everybody. No critics in the front row. 
It's the heart. It's the heart. It's the heart. You know, you know what this term in the scripture heart means? This is so good. The center of all life. You guys are not impressed. Like, duh, of course. Like, I could have told you that. Really? Then why don't you guard your heart? It's the center of all of our life. And I could have told you what the definition was. But I've never learned to properly stand guard of my heart because it wasn't the popular thing to do. Because I can't see my heart. So what I do is I pay attention to a life that I can see and I pretend that it's actually more important than the life that I can't see, which is actually more important. Because the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 that we should guard our hearts because all the issues of life flow from our heart. It doesn't say stand guard of your six-pack or lack thereof. (laughs) It doesn't say be my, it literally says to guard your heart because your heart is the center of your life. And from your heart, all the issues of your life will flow. You don't fight with your wife because you go to the gym too much. You fight with your wife, maybe over going to the gym too much, but it's really because there's something in your heart that is an issue. You don't fight with your wife because you hobby too hard. Now, you might hobby too hard and you may need to pull back. But what is the reason at the center of who you are that you hobby so hard? Interesting. Interesting. Why do you have to have all of those extra toys? Because somebody way back when told you that you would never be successful. And it left a wound on the inside of you. And now there's an overflow of that wound coming from your life. And it's causing you to hurt yourself and hurt those around you. We've got to inventory our heart. This place in our heart is essentially the settings app on our phone whenever we open our phones and we go to the settings. I've got my settings on my homepage because I always mess things up and the overflow of my settings always jack up my phone. So I always have to get into my phone to change my settings in order to fix the overflow or outcome of my phone. Right? I've got to go get on my settings. But here's the thing that is maddening to me for people. Some of us don't even know where the settings app is on our phones. We're like, this thing just doesn't work, doggone it. I can't believe this dad blame thing just doesn't work. What? What? I'm like, babe. Just go to the settings. <laughs> I'm, t- I'm telling you, it just doesn't work. It does, it does work. You just have to set the settings properly. You have to get into the center of the life of your phone. you got to get into the center of the life of your life. You can't keep overlooking it because not everybody else puts it on the home screen. You've got to put it on the home screen of your world. You've got to put it on the front page of your life so that you can get into the settings, the center of your life, and pay attention. There you can make small adjustments. You can make big adjustments. You can make adjustments. It's the part of us, the heart that you set in order to create what the rest of us puts on display. Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? It's an indicator outwardly of something that's going on inwardly that needs to be adjusted. Somebody say the heart. The heart. The Bible goes on to say in verse 35, this word treasury, and it says that 
where there's good treasure in the heart of a good person, good stuff will happen. And if there's bad treasure in the bad heart of a person, there will be bad stuff that happens. This word treasury specifically means a place where goods and precious things are collected, okay? And so through the course of your life, you've had different goods and, um, and precious things collected in your heart, and they start to build up, right? So we got some positive, like we're born, everything's good, our families love us, maybe our parents get divorced, you know what I mean? So now we got a positive and negative, and then maybe we go to school and we really like it, but our friends, you know, our friends turn their back on us and they're not nice. And so over the course of the years, what happens is you've got all these positives, all these negatives, and they start to build up in our lives, right? Start to build up. Start to build up, start to build up, all these positives, all these negatives, all the stuff. Positives and negatives. What happens is your life gets so full. The center of who you are gets so full, it starts to overflow whether they're positive or negative. The only way to find out what's actually in your heart is to take inventory of this thing that's overflowing from your heart. The good stuff indicates good stuff that's there in that treasury or in the settings or the unseen bank vault of your life, right? The bad things, the negative things that you're seeing death come from, what are they? They're tied to something that is on the inside of your heart that is not life-giving, okay? Why do you keep going from relationship to relationship to relationship to relationship? I don't know, but it's fruit that brings evidence to something that's in your heart that needs healed. But you can't keep looking over it. You can't keep glossing over it. You can't keep looking past it. you got to actually navigate it. Somebody say navigate it. So this word treasury, literally, there is a treasure on the inside of each and every one of us. There's a treasure in you. There's a treasure in you. It's on the inside of me too. But because I haven't learned how to deal with things properly, everybody's going to have positives and everybody's going to have negatives. But we've got to learn to be the people that stand guard of our hearts. And you know how you recognize these? Listen to what your mouth is saying. Not listen to what somebody else's mouth is saying. Listen to what your mouth is saying. Is it positive? Is it negative? Is it positive? Is it negative? Is it positive? Is it negative? This is the overflow of your life. The positive things you want to double up on. The negative things you want to replace with the truth. Because for every lie that the enemy has deposited on the inside of you, in the treasury of your heart, there is a truth of God's word for. You don't have to. See, here's what we've tried to do, okay. Because, because I feel insecure, okay. One of, my, one of my major things in life is rejection. Me personally, rejection. No matter where I go, I always think that people aren't going to like me. No matter what I do when I leave, I always think, no, they didn't like me. Oh, why did I say that? That was stupid. Gosh, they're never going to want to hang out with me again. They're never going to come back to church. I mean, during first service, I said RBF. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, man, nobody's going to come back to church. Because they didn't understand that I wasn't talking about the world's RBF. I was talking about the church's RBF, reading Bible face. Come on, everybody. You know how when you read your Bible, you're like, mm, lean in, and you're like, really focusing? You know what I'm talking about? But now I'm like, oh no, everybody in first service is never coming back. And then I'm like, well, I guess that'll leave room for more people that want to come. I don't, you got to figure it out, you know. But there's a truth for every lie. And it's our responsibility to do the work. The next part of the scripture says this in verse number 36. And I tell you this, you must give an account on judgment day for every single idle word that you speak. The words you say will either acquit you or they'll condemn you. So number two thing that you need to know, and I'm ending right here. You guys can come on back already. Already. <laughs> oh, Pastor Matt, you were so short. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Not true. 
So the words that we speak will show us where we are, but the words that we speak will also shape where we go. They'll shape where we go. And this is where the work starts, everybody. Inventory every single idle word. Every word that isn't producing life, if it's a negative, 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 negative, you gotta inventory this and say, oh man, where did this go to in the heart? Where did this lead to in the heart? Where did this lead to in the heart? Where did this lead to in the heart? And you know how you do that? You just ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, where did that come from? Where's that rejection come from? Where does that fear of not belonging come from? Oh, really? Gosh, I would have never thought about that. Because I didn't even know about that until you showed me God. The Bible says that generational blessings will go on for generations. But generational curses and sin will go even to the third and the fourth. So something that I know that I have to stand guard of in my heart consistently is rejection. Why? Because I don't want my kids to feel that. I don't want it to overflow into them. And so I've got to identify where does this come from? Okay, now I'm going to replace it with a lie. Greater is he who is in me than he who is against me. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm chosen. I'm a royal priesthood. I'm powerful beyond measure because of the Spirit of God that dwells on the inside of me. I've got to identify the words, the thoughts that are flowing over from my heart and then tie it back to where I need healing from trauma. And can I tell you something? My words will encourage you. Pastor Kerry's words will encourage you. Your city group that you should be in, those leaders' words will encourage you, but only your words can heal you. Only your words by the Spirit of God can heal you. Only my words, only my voice can access my phone. Your words can't access my phone. My words can't access yours. Only my words can heal me. Pastor, but I just don't, I don't know if I believe, I don't know if I can get on board with that. Then keep seeing death produced in your life. I think that we ought to be people who trade death for life. I think that's who God's called us to be. But it's going to require the attention. It's going to require the appropriate aid. It's going to require us applying those words. And you know what? It's going to take some time. So, Pastor Matt, you mean to tell me that the days of you just being like a macho guy, like, because here's what I would do every time I felt rejected. I would fight somebody. I'd beat somebody up. You're not going to reject me. I'm going to reject you. I'm going to pretend that I don't care. Oh, really? I'm going to pretend that it's a joke. Oh, really? You know what you're doing, friend. You're just indicating trauma on the inside. I know that that makes you feel like more of a man culturally or independent as a woman culturally. But the reality is all it does is it indicates just those deep levels of trauma and insecurity and hurt and pain. Would you stand on your feet with me this morning? So here's what I think. I feel like I feel like some of us may have been held hostage or held back by maybe somebody's words over you in the past. And I just can't get past that. I can't get past the things that my dad said. I can't get past the things that my mom said. I can't get past the things that my ex said. I can't get past 
all of those things. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. That's a lie. You can get over it. You can get past it. God can heal you. He can move you forward. Yes, you can. I just have felt so stuck for so long, Pastor Matt. God can heal you. In fact, he wants to heal you. You're not the dirty, rotten scoundrel that the enemy has convinced you you are. You're actually a chosen son or daughter. You're actually powerful beyond measure. You're actually chosen. You're actually set apart. Your father knows the number of hairs that are on your head. And it's time for us to lean into some of that. And become the men and become the women that we're called to be. Become the husbands, become the wives, become the parents, the sons and the daughters that we're supposed to be. Stop playing games. It's time to move forward. Can I tell you something? It's only going to happen through your voice. Somebody say, my voice brings healing to my life. If that's you and you would say, Pastor Matt, I need some healing in my life. I feel the Holy Spirit kind of tugging on my heart this morning. And I think that I might need to make a declaration of faith to declare God's word over me and some areas of trauma in me. Knowing that it's not all going to be healed right now. But I'm starting the process right now. If that's you, would you just lift your hands? Come on. Come on, all over. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. We are those people. We are faith people. We are those people. Repeat this after me. Say, Father God, today I surrender my heart. I surrender my mind. I surrender my words to you. Help me, Holy Spirit. Take inventory of my words, revealing my heart, replacing lies with truth so that I can move forward, becoming all that you called me to be. Because while people fail, 